The Oregon coast is home to many iconic bridges along US Route 101. During the summer of 2022, my grandpa and I took a trip along the Oregon coast and saw many beautiful sights and crossed many iconic bridges on our journey along the beautiful Oregon coast. We will begin in the south as we make our way north along the Oregon coast, beginning at the California state line and then ending up there at the Columbia River at the Oregon-Washington border. Here are some of the highlights of the many iconic bridges that we crossed on our journey on the Oregon coast. The first major bridge that we crossed on our journey on the Oregon coast was the Thomas Creek Bridge, which is located just north of Brookings, Oregon. The Thomas Creek Bridge is 345 feet high and is the tallest bridge in Oregon. The bridge was built in 1961 and has a total length of 956 feet and was designed by Ivan D. Merchant, making it one of the few bridges not designed by Conde McCola along US 101 in Oregon. When you drive across the Thomas Creek Bridge along US 101, you don't really notice how high it is, but there is a sign there when you cross the bridge noting that it is the highest bridge in Oregon. And the views looking off towards the left of the coastline of Oregon are also extremely beautiful and underrated in my opinion. And there's even a pullout on the south side of the bridge there to get a good look of the whole bridge and the coastline as well. The next bridge along US 101 is the Isaac Lee Patterson Bridge, also known as the Rogue River Bridge, which is located in Gold Beach, Oregon. This bridge was designed by Conde McCullough and opened to traffic on May 28, 1932. It was even added to the National Register of Historic Places in 2005. The bridge crosses the Rogue River and has a total length of 1,939 feet. The bridge is a concrete arch bridge and costs $592,000 to construct, or just over $10 million in today's money. The bridge is named after Isaac Lee Patterson, who served as the governor of Oregon from 1927 to 1929, and the bridge would begin construction right after his death and was named in his honor. The views looking out towards the east of the Rogue River and its estuary are a sight to behold. One popular thing to do here in Gold Beach is to take the Jerry's Rogue Jets up the Rogue River and enjoy a fun day of adventure along the Rogue River. I have done it personally and it's something I highly recommend doing. It's fun for the entire family. The next bridge along US 101 is the Bullards Bridge which crosses the Coquall River. This bridge was constructed in the 1950s and opened to traffic in 1954 for a cost of $626,000. The next bridge along US 101 is the Conde McCola Memorial Bridge, which is located just north of Coos Bay and North Bend, Oregon. The bridge crosses Coos Bay, which is the largest bay in Oregon and the largest bay between Humboldt Bay in California and Puget Sound in Washington. The Conde McCola Memorial Bridge is a cantilever bridge and opened to traffic in 1936. With a total length of 5,305 feet, it is the longest bridge entirely within Oregon and is just over a mile long. The bridge was also the most expensive bridge on the Oregon coast and cost $2.1 million to construct or roughly $40 million in today's money. Many of the bridges on the Oregon coast were designed by civil engineer Conde McCola, including this one. Conde McCola worked for the Oregon Department of Transportation from 1919 to 1935 and again from 1937 until his death in 1946. He designed some of the most beautiful bridges along the Oregon coast, many of which have stood the test of time and will continue to be here for generations to come. Prior to 1947, this bridge was simply known as the North Bend Bridge, but it was renamed after Conde McCullough in 1947 after he died the previous year. With its impressive length at just over a mile long, the Conde McCullough Memorial Bridge certainly stands out among other bridges here along the Oregon coast. The next bridge along the Oregon coast is the Umpqua River Bridge, which crosses the Umpqua River north of Reedsport, Oregon. The Umpqua River Bridge is a swing span bridge designed by Conde McCola and is the only remaining swing span bridge on the Oregon State Highway System. The bridge is 2,213 feet long and opened to traffic on February 15, 1936 for a cost of $581,000. 
The bridge was even added to the National Register of Historic Places in 2005. Our next bridge along the Oregon coast is the Sayuslaw Slaw River Bridge, which is located just south of Florence, Oregon. I would also like to apologize if I'm mispronouncing the name of this. I've looked up several pronunciations and I've heard several different ones and this one just made the most sense to me. The Sayuslaw Slaw River Bridge is a bascule bridge and is the smallest and least expensive of the major coastal bridges. It is 1,650 feet long and cost $527,000 to construct and open to traffic on March 31, 1936. Like most other bridges along the Oregon coast, it was also designed by Condé McCullough and was even added to the National Register of Historic Places in 2005. I must say, out of all of the bridges along the Oregon coast, this has to be one of my favorite ones design-wise and just really goes to show how good Condé McCullough was at designing bridges. We actually spent the night here in Florence, Oregon on our Oregon Coast road trip and I was able to go outside of our hotel which just so happened to be right there along the river overlooking the bridge and I was able to capture this amazing lighting right here as the sun was setting right behind the bridge. It was truly an awesome sight to see. The next bridge along US 101 is the Cape Creek Bridge which is located just north of the Sea Lion Caves about 15 miles north of Florence, Oregon. The Cape Creek Bridge and nearby tunnel opened to traffic in 1932. The Cape Creek Bridge is a arch bridge that was also designed by Condé McCullough and resembles a Roman aqueduct. The bridge has a total length of 619 feet. The next bridge on US 101 in Oregon is the All Sea Bay Bridge, which is located in Waldport, Oregon. The All Sea Bay Bridge is a concrete arch bridge and opened to traffic in 1991 for a cost of $42.4 million and replaced the original bridge that opened to traffic in 1936. The original 1936 bridge was designed by Condé McCullough and was torn down after the current bridge opened. It is one of the few bridges designed by Condé McCullough that was torn down. The original bridge was torn down due to significant corrosion due to the hostile environment. The current All Sea Bay Bridge is 2,910 feet long and features four lanes of traffic compared to the original bridge which only carried two. The next bridge along the Oregon coast is the Yaquina Bay Bridge. The Yaquina Bay Bridge was the last major coast bridge to be constructed and opened to traffic on September 6, 1936. The completion of this bridge replaced the last ferry crossing on the Oregon Coast Highway. The bridge cost $1.3 million to construct or roughly $28 million in today's money. The bridge has a total length of 3,260 feet and has a clearance of 133 feet. The bridge crosses Yaquina Bay. The bridge is one of the most recognizable of all the Oregon Coast bridges and was also designed by Condé McCullough and was even added to the National Register of Historic Places in 2005. This is my personal favorite bridge on the Oregon Coast. Its design is simply iconic and is a testament to the brilliant mind of Condé McCullough and the creative genius he was at designing beautiful bridges here on the Oregon coast. The Yaquina Bay Bridge is located just south of Newport, Oregon. The next bridge along US 101 in Oregon is the Depot Bay Bridge. The bridge originally opened in 1927 and was expanded in 1940 to accommodate four lanes of traffic. The Depot Bay Bridge is a concrete arch bridge and was also designed by Condé McCola. It has a total length of 312 feet and crosses Depot Bay, which is known as the world's smallest harbor. Our last major bridge entirely within Oregon is the new Young's Bay Bridge, which crosses Young's Bay near the mouth of the Columbia River between Warrenton and Astoria, Oregon. The new Young's Bay Bridge opened to traffic on August 29, 1964 and replaced the old Young's Bay Bridge and Lewis and Clark River Bridge, which both were designed by Condé McCullough. 
This bridge was built as part of a realignment of US 101 between Warrenton and Astoria, Oregon. The new Young's Bay Bridge is a vertical lift bridge and has a total length of 4,200 feet. Before we end off the video, I would like to acknowledge a few bridges that were once part of the alignment of US 101 in Oregon, but no longer are located on the route that US 101 follows today through Oregon. I just mentioned the old Young's Bay Bridge and the Lewis and Clark River Bridge, but I would also like to acknowledge the Rocky Creek Bridge, Soapstone Creek Bridge, and the Euchre Creek Bridge. I don't have any pictures or videos of these bridges, but they are all worth mentioning as they are still all drivable and were once part of US 101. The last bridge along US 101 in Oregon is the Astoria Megler Bridge, which crosses the mouth of the Columbia River between Oregon and Washington. This bridge is by far the longest bridge along US 101 and has a total length of 21,474 feet, making it just over four miles long. The bridge opened to traffic on August 27, 1966 for a cost of 24 million or roughly 155 million in today's money. The bridge is a commanding presence in Astoria, Oregon and can be seen from many miles away due to its impressive length. The bridge also marked the completion of US 101 between Los Angeles, California and Olympia, Washington. Prior to the completion of the bridge, you had to take a ferry to connect US 101 in Oregon and Washington. The Astoria Megler Bridge is a steel cantilever through truss bridge and is the longest continuous truss bridge in North America. While Conde McCullough passed away way before the bridge even began construction, I would like to think that he would appreciate the bridge's design as it is truly a work of art here as you cross the Columbia River right before it enters the Pacific Ocean. While I'm sure this bridge is a lot of people's favorite of all of the Oregon Coast bridges, for me personally this bridge really gets exciting right at the beginning and then it's just pretty much a straight drive across the river after you pass through this high section right here. Most of the bridge is just right along the water there and it's just really a drag to drive in my opinion. And that's not a knock on the bridge itself, I mean it can't be this high up for the entire four miles that it crosses the mouth of the Columbia River here. but. The views as you come down through this section right here looking into Washington truly are a sight to behold and makes you really appreciate the length of this bridge, that's for sure. Prior to driving across this bridge in June of 2022, this bridge was very high on my bucket list and certainly I'm sure it is on a lot of people's as well. If you have a fun experience driving this bridge, feel free to let me know in the comments because I would really love to hear your guys' experience driving on this bridge as well as other experiences that you might have driving on other bridges here on the Oregon coast. These are simply some of the most beautiful bridges in America in my opinion. Well folks, I really hope you enjoyed this video as we explored the many iconic bridges along the Oregon coast here along US 101. The Oregon coast is one of the most beautiful regions of not only Oregon but the United States and crossing these iconic bridges really adds to the driving experience along this amazing stretch of road. These bridges really showcase the genius mind of Conde McCullough and his vision for what bridges should look like. The bridges along the Oregon coast are some of my favorite in the entire country and I always enjoy driving across them whenever I'm on this stretch of road. What is your personal favorite bridge along the Oregon coast? Feel free to let me know in the comments. I really hope you all enjoyed watching this video and I will see you all for the next video. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day everyone.